Welcome to a brand new episode of Cup of EO, the tea break size podcast that gets to the heart of the important topics in the world of voiceover. Expect candid stories, top tips and sage advice as I chat with expert guests who are at the top of their game in the voiceover industry. I'm your host, Kimberly Parker, tea addict and VOpreneur. And this week, I'll be spilling the tea on vocal health. Do VOs actually bother with warm-ups? And what can we do to keep our voices, bodies and minds in tip-top condition? Oh, Christ, I've got a session in 10 minutes. Um, I better, you know, slap myself around the face. We're all very well versed on techniques to use when we're in the booth recording to elevate our performances and bring a script to life. But what about techniques to maintain and look after our vocal health after the session ends, at the end of the day or on the weekend when we're not working? We use our voices all day, every day, and it's sometimes easy to forget that it's our most valuable tool and that we need to look after and monitor it if we don't want to jeopardise our livelihoods. I have to admit, I'm guilty of not always warming up fully before a session, but I'm getting much better at noticing in advance when my voice isn't quite right and taking the steps I need to get things back on track. I found one book in particular really helpful. If you want to learn more about how the voice works, as well as useful exercises to use every day, then I'd recommend seeking this one out. This is a Voice by Jeremy Fisher and Gillian Kays is a practical toolkit of step-by-step vocal exercises to help speakers and singers of all abilities to transform the quality of their voice. It contains 99 exercises to train, project and harness the power of your voice. I keep this book next to my booth and it's my go-to for last-minute warm-ups and troubleshooting any issues I have. It's really easy to navigate and there are lots of simple diagrams to help with understanding the more technical explanation of things. Whether it's scales, lip trills, tongue release, jaw release, yawning, full body warm-ups, hydrating, avoiding alcohol and caffeine or eating green apples. There's a lot of information out there about what we as voiceover artists should be doing. But what I want to know is how much of it are we actually doing? So I invited some of my lovely voiceover friends round for a cuppa and a chat to discuss. This week's guests are Alexia Kombu, Ant Hewson, Darren Altman, Sam Boffin, Lizzie Jobling and Abby Phillips. I've included more information about all of them in the show notes, so be sure to check those out after the episode. We've got a few mentions and shout outs this week for the Queen of Vocal Health, Nick Redman. Hi Nick! As well as some rather unusual and random routines. <laughs> Um, in terms of warm-ups, I would say like Nick Redman is your go-to to check out her videos. Um, I just do some trills, some sirens. Um, you know, have you heard of the puppy whimpers? The <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just really high-pitched. Um, I feel like that's a re- that's a really good one. Um, and just general um, hydration. I always have a hot drink. Um, try and start hydrating. They say from the night before, don't they? But do we do that? <laughs> I don't really. <laughs> in terms of warm-ups, I generally go, oh, Christ, I've got a session in 10 minutes. Um, I better, you know, slap myself around the face. So, you know, genuinely, you know, rubbing your cheeks, raw, um, some tongue waggling, a few scales, that sort of thing. I do find that, I don't know if this is the case for you, when I go to a directed session, I am not one of those people that could ever go into workshops where they say, right now, shake yourself around, you know, behave like a chicken, do the, you know, do the weird things that make you feel self-conscious. So I can't go into a booth and go, sorry, Mr. Engineer, give me five minutes while I do my skills. That's not going to happen. And I'm also not going to do it walking down the street like a lunatic. Well, don't tell Nick Redman this, but I don't, I don't do any warm ups. I, you know, I've never done warm ups, you know, lip trills. And the one thing I will do is stay hydrated throughout the day, drink a lot of water. The first thing I do when I get up is I do, um, you know, 100 press ups, I warm up, I go for a run, I'll run five to six, seven miles a day. It's so up and down what we do. If I don't, you know, if I have a bad day, you know, where I've, I've done one little job or no jobs, at least I've run. I have just recovered from laryngitis. And in fact, I can still hear a little bit of it in my voice. Um, so 
prior to that bout of laryngitis, I would have said, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for me personally is I've got quite a clicky voice, so I need to drink a lot of water. Um, that's something that I have to do every day. And even at the weekends, I have to keep myself hydrated all the time. And it's no good sort of having a boozy night before a session. So I can't drink in the week, which I find quite irksome, actually. <laughs> Because you can hear it in the voice the next day. So so I think hydration, and for me, I have a load of tongue twisters that I do that if if I can't do the, the sort of Nick Redmond scales, I haven't got the time to do that or something, I've at least got a few tongue twisters under my belt that will allow me to warm up my mouth. So those are the two things I think are the really important things for me is getting my mouth warmed up uh, and also actually getting the whole body warmed up, I suppose. Um, that, I would say, and I always stand... Even if I'm long form, I stand. Don't you find it brings, it just brings an energy to it? I mean, I am terrible at warming up. I don't know if I should be saying that, especially as a voice of a business coach. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, say, do as I say, not what I do, whatever it is. Um, I would say one of the sort of the key things that I have learned, and I learned these from a variety of sources, um, predominantly Nick Redman. Lip trills, definitely. I sort of just go around the house doing that quite often in the morning. Um, and I do love a body shake. But that is more sort of like just shaking your arms and your legs out and that sort of thing. But I do find that actually that's beneficial if you're in a bit of a funny state of mind anyway, because um, it just releases any tension. There's quite a lot of evidence and research behind that anyway. Um, so I do do a bit of that. The other th really important thing that I learned along the way and from Nick Redman as well was if you've got a really early morning session, the best thing to do is hydrate the night before. Um, definitely drinking adequate amounts of fluids the day before and the evening before you will actually wake up hydrated because hydration happens from inside to outside. So there's no point glugging three pints of water at half past eight in the morning when you've got a nine o'clock session because that's going to sort of lubricate the outside of all your bits and bobs without sounding too crude, um, and not the inside. <laughs> it is difficult because it's, I mean, it's just like anything. Like we, we all should be drinking more water. We all should be doing this. We all should be doing that. And especially if you're using voice, of course, you know, that's paramount, but you just fall into bad habits. But yeah, the lip trills, definitely hydrating the night before all the way. And don't eat toast. Just don't eat toast before your session. <laughs> So obviously getting ill is the scariest thing ever for us um, and losing our voices. I actually recently have been struggling with this because I have quite bad hay fever. Um, so I've been, which I'd never had until about three years ago. And now it's just, it's really bad. It's developed and it really has been impacting the way that I sound because sometimes I'm really croaky or... I've been coughing a lot or sneezing a lot and it just affects everything all in, in that area. Um, so obviously with that, I've been doing all the sort of like normal stuff you would do when you have a cold and you take sort of cough syrup and you do all of those sorts of things. But um, one of the most helpful things, and it's free and it really easy to do, is just steaming because it just cleans everything out it just like clears clears you clears you out and it um it opens everything up so and you know you don't need one of these fancy you can buy these sort of steaming things but you don't need to buy some fancy thing like that literally just like a bowl of hot water a tea towel over your head and just breathe it in um that really really helps me um as like a a quick sort of help um just to get you sounding a bit fresher and I mean, it's really, really boring and sort of not the most exciting answer, but honey and lemon, just like you can't go wrong, like a spoonful of honey and, you know, hot honey and lemon um, and steaming. That's I, I just like to do those things, really. Just keep it simple. You don't need to do all these fancy posh things. And, and you know, I know that obviously there are probably things that like um, dairy and stuff like that that maybe we should avoid a bit more but I'm a bit of a coffee addict and I'm not going to go without my coffee in the morning so you know because it's all oh we should be have don't don't have too much caffeine and don't have too much dairy and all this kind of stuff but personally I love a coffee so I'm going to have one um, but then I'm going to have my honey and lemon and do my steaming and right as rain so <laughs> just drink loads of water and you'll be all right so <laughs> 
Aside from some great exercises to warm up the voice and body, it seems like the most important thing we can do as voiceover artists is to make sure we're hydrated adequately. There are two types of hydration, systemic and topical or surface hydration. Systemic hydration refers to liquid within the body and vocal fold tissue. It takes around four hours for the water you drink to reach your vocal cords. It doesn't directly come into contact with them when you drink. Instead, our digestive system processes the water we drink and from our food and then produces mucus to lubricate the vocal cords, which is why glugging a pint of water five minutes before a session won't really make a difference if you're dehydrated. Topical hydration is created for the vocal folds by the act of swallowing. When we swallow, the larynx rises, pushing and spreading mucus over the surface of the vocal folds. We all know that water is the best thing to drink, but the general consensus is that almost any liquid counts, as long as it doesn't contain alcohol. Coffee and tea also count for your daily water intake. Many used to believe that they were dehydrating, but that myth has since been debunked. The diuretic effect does not offset hydration. If you get a bit sick of water, there are also foods that can boost your intake. All of these are made up of over 85% water and count towards your daily intake. Apples, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes and blueberries. Hay fever, allergies and illness also came up in chats with my guests. And that's one thing I've learned over the years is to be honest with yourself and your clients about when you're too ill to record. Yes, you can try and scrape through with a sniffle and no one else might notice. But is it really worth taking the risk of losing a job or, worse still, a client because you wasted studio time recording full of a head cold and now they have a recording they can't use? If you're upfront and honest, you'll find most clients are flexible and willing to wait for you to get better and will appreciate your professionalism of putting your health first and taking your career seriously. It's interesting how much doing things to improve your mental health or state of mind came up, and I find that true as well. Sometimes you might not be in the right headspace before a session, for whatever reason, and being able to realign your body and let go of any tension or negative thoughts before you hit record will make a huge difference. I'm a big fan of mindfulness and meditation, and if you have the time, it's a great thing to incorporate into your daily routine, as it really helps you get in tune with yourself. The way we carry ourselves, tension in our shoulders, neck or jaw, as well as stress or ailments like back pain, can have a huge impact on how and how well we voice. So being in touch with your body, your mental state and general mood is really useful to make sure you're able to voice to your best ability. Join me same time next week when I'll be spilling the tea on networking. How often should we be doing it? What counts as networking? And is it really that important for business? Being able to meet uh, like-minded people is, is, is wonderful and it is I should say crucial. I am a terrible networker in that I am terrified of groups of people. For me personally, that human connection, you just can't beat it. I, I used to hate the term networking. I'm still not keen on the term networking, but I love meeting people. Try not to go anywhere without a business card. You never know who you're going to bump into. Thanks for tuning in, my caffeinated comrades. If this episode has sparked any questions or comments or you just want to connect, you can find my email address and social handles at KimberlyParker.com. If you haven't caught up with my other episodes, feel free to check them out and let me know what you think. You've been listening to Cup of VO. Until next time, 